I'm Jay, and this is the Yankee and the Brit. And today, I want to talk to you about why the mainstream sports media keeps attacking Pat McAfee. But first, cue the intro. Okay, I want to talk to you guys today about why the sports mainstream media keeps attacking Pat McAfee. And it's easy to see. A lot of them are very upset that Pat McAfee didn't spend 20 plus years at a newspaper, putting in his time, working hard um, for his craft in journalism, and he is way more popular and doing better than them and making way more money. But the fact is, they're upset because they chose a dying industry. The newspaper industry is a dying industry. People get all of their stuff on the internet now. They don't, you know, subscribe to the New York Post like they used to. They don't buy the Milwaukee Journey, Journal Sentinel or the New York Times like they used to. They may subscribe online, but people can get everything for free online now. So you got a lot of these old reporters all pissed off that a guy who was a really great punter in the NFL with great energy took his talents to the internet, to the radio, and... He hit this lane that took away from what they were doing. But don't be mad at him. You didn't change with the times. This is not how people get their news anymore. People don't pick up the paper and read it. And people are getting sick of Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless and all these debate shows with talking heads arguing over ridiculous shit with guys like Skip Bayless who says some dumbass shit about LeBron James and then just fucking stands on it for fucking seven years and the more that he gets backlash, the more he doubles down on the ridiculous shit he doesn't even believe. Like Stephen A. Smith, go ahead and talk basketball, my man. You know what you're talking about. Talk bo boxing. You know what you're talking about. Stay away from the USC. You made yourself look like a fucking fool with the Connor and Cowboy fight. Also, stay away from football because you're fucking ridiculous. But nobody wants this anymore from their sports news. And if you look at what Pat McAfee and all the boys on his show have done, they bring this electric energy. Now, I watch it on YouTube. Some of you may listen to it on Sirius Radio, however. But they bring this electric energy to a show where it's a bunch of friends sitting around bullshitting about sports. And I know people are mad because of the foul language. The world's changing. People don't care about that anymore. Older people still care about the swearing and different things. And don't get me wrong, as somebody who has a foul mouth, I have an aunt who's a nun. I try to watch my mouth around her. I don't swear in public. I try not to swear around children. But if I'm sitting around with my friends, yeah, I'm going to be like, fuck this or that shit's crazy or whatever. And that's what these dudes do. They have a ton of fun hanging out, talking sports. And because Pat was in the NFL, he's got connections to bring people on his show to get Ian Rappaport and different guys on the show, different NFL players. And the bigger he gets, he gets PGA guys and baseball guys. And this show is electric. The energy is exciting. And these old head writers are mad that Pat didn't supposedly put the time or the work in. The world's changed now. That's not how it works. You don't always have to grind for 20 years to get somewhere anymore. Social media, the internet, it's all changed everything. And if you're good at what you do, time don't mean shit. Anybody who enjoys Pat McAfee, you get it. You get that the energy, the fun, the excitement, the ball busting, the joking. And people were really mad that he got Aaron Rodgers on the mainstream media because Rodgers gives kind of half-ass answers to the... Um, reporters. He's not a big fan of some of the questions they ask, but you get to see a whole different side of him on the Pat McAfee show and people are upset that Pat got him and he ain't been doing it long enough. It's not just Pat though. It's the group of guys he brings around. Like AJ Hawk is so fun to watch on there and I never thought I would say that. I got to see a side of Aaron Rodgers before he was on Pat McAfee where I've heard stories that he was a douchebag. Living in Green Bay, I've heard a lot of crazy shit about Aaron Rodgers, which I think now is probably blown out of proportion. I enjoy the fact that the true COVID cowboy, Tone Diggs, he cracks me up. Nick is angry and I love him. Nick is one of my favorite because he's angry, but when he speaks up, he's funny. And as a huge hockey fan, that's my guy when he comes to talking about, now think about Gumpy. This is a dude that was working on a ship in Canada kept calling in. They liked what he had to say. Man, they gave dude a job. 
This is the dude you're hating on? Some dude who took some dude off a ship in Canada and gave him a job? And Gumpy is like the lovable stooge, even though I mean stooge in the best way, because if you want to win some soccer bets, follow that dude on FanDuel, you will probably win some money. Foxy, the lovable idiot. I just, this whole show is amazing, and I don't get why people don't un see why the mainstream sport media is coming after them. It's all a jealousy hate play. I mean, Vito, some of the best worded questions ever ever on the, or polls on the internet. This crew works. There's a lot of them, but it works because they're friends and they get high as fuck, which annoys people. But they're doing what they want to do the way they want to do it and they're making big money and that's where the hate and jealousy is coming from because people always expect you to have to do with something in a certain way, to pay your dues in a certain way and anybody who doesn't do it the way they did it, people want to get upset with because, oh, I had to put in 20 years. I had to go to Northwestern and get a, a journalist degree. I had to do this. Well, I'm sorry. You did it the way that most people do. But Pat took what he had and he flipped it into something that a lot of people enjoy. And he opened the doors for a lot of people. And no, I am not comparing the Yankee and the Brit or what I do to Pat McAfee because if I get six, 800 views on a video, I'm excited. This dude gets... 300,000, a half a million views on one video. I will never be Pat McAfee. I'm not trying to be Pat McAfee. All I'm saying is he opened the door for a new way of podcasting on sports where people actually realize like, hey, let's listen to somebody else's opinions. Maybe I get a laugh. Maybe I learn something. It's fun. So thank you to Pat for people like me and Maddie and giving us an opportunity to do this. But it just really makes me upset that there's so many fucking haters out there and that they want to cancel him because he swears or because he doesn't do it the way they did it or because he makes jokes that make people feel a certain way, uncomfortable, whatever. Fuck that. Then that show's not for you. But that doesn't mean you got to come in and hate on something that somebody else is doing, man. There's enough money in the world for all of us to make it. You don't have to keep another person down for you to make it. All right, guys. I just went on like a seven, eight minute rant, but I keep seeing these people come out against Pat McAfee and attacking shows like that, but yet crazy ass Skip Bayless and ridiculous ass Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman and everybody else who's some talking head on TV saying crazy shit just to get views is okay, but Pat does it a different way and now he's a fucking scumbag? I don't know. These dudes need to stop being so fucking jealous and hateful and just be happy that another motherfucker made it and maybe they opened up avenues for other people coming forward that they don't have to go through the same shit you did. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. One world, one love. Deuces.